Hello, Seth. You are up first, sir. Hey, Bart. Where are you playing out of here, Seth? Yeah, so I have a hand from the Seminole Hard Rock Hollywood uh, 1 2 game. Southern Florida, right? Yeah, in South Florida. Yep. Yep. Okay. So a 1 2 game. All right. What's the buy in structure? So it's eight handed, it's 300 cap with a $5 button straddle for this hand. Okay. $5 button straddle, and then what does it go in order through the blinds? or? Yeah, so action starts on the small blind, um, and I'm 500 effective with the main villain on this hand. All right, so 500 effective. Does like the button get like ultimate last action or something like that? No, not in this game. Uh, if there's any action, button just acts in turn when it gets around to him. All right, so kind of a traditional setup. So through the blinds first, okay. Yep, so hero in small blind opens king of diamonds jack of diamonds to 15. so you're first to act right yep first to act how often is this game straddled like is it every hand it's not every hand it's about half the time um and standard open with the straddle is, has been 15 dollars. okay just three x huh yep i mean it's interesting to note too i always say this that you're in the ultimate under the gun spot so much like i say sometimes like in a in double board when you're so when you're up front your range should be so unbelievably strong here that i do wonder i haven't played mississippi straddle games in a while but i, I do wonder if you could start l implementing like a limp range from up front to and i'm not usually a huge fan of limp re-raising but this might be the one time to limp call limp re-raise limp re-raise bluff but if nobody's adjusting because it's one two then it probably doesn't matter but when you look at it if you open from the small blind that should be unbelievably tight which is why i always advocate in bomb pots from checking from up front blind after the flop because the bet you coming in betting into say like eight unknown hands is just so so strong people can play really correctly it's kind of the same concept pre-flop but i mean if it's one two nobody's paying attention so all right so you go to 15. yeah and i actually do some of the the limping up front if it's a stronger player on the button but in this lineup there wasn't much three betting, so I just went with the standard RFI from early position. Okay, so you go to 15, yep. So uh, middle position calls, and then the button also calls. And by the way, one of our content creators, the guy that made the solve for live pre-flop ranges, which was like done with like live node locking of what he thought were tendencies, Nate Schmidt, there are ranges, I believe, on a button straddle in the solve for live over at crush live poker king jack suit is probably close i mean again the lower you play probably the more i i would open a lot of high card hands like where i would shift in terms of it's a really capped game is the high card hands go up in value like even king queen off is way better than like five six suited and i, I honestly i'd rather have king queen off than like ace four suited in, in these types of games, just because it goes to showdown so much, you know? So MP calls, button calls, okay, so three ways, 45? Yeah, and button, he's going to be the main villain in this hand, and I've seen him flat some hands that should have been three bet preflop earlier in the session. Uh, he flatted ace king and pocket jacks, uh, and got to showdown with those, but also showed up flatting hands like six deuce suited. So his, his flatting range is extremely wide this is the button yeah the button yep. okay so the flop comes out uh king of hearts queen of hearts four of clubs okay and i think i have a pretty straightforward continue here so I, I lead out for 15. i don't know about that type of sizing though here i mean here's my take i mean the lower you go when i just look at this board and look at the properties of your hand right it's a t it's a textured two broadway board with a flush draw. So usually in single race pots, even multi-way, we want to bet larger than that. The other things that like quickly come to my head as well, there's less of a chance that somebody's got king queen, right? Because there's a queen out there and you would think that ace king is three bet off. Now, maybe not always at one, two, but there are things that lean towards you having the best hand here, the blocking properties, the propensity for people to three bet ace king. I want to get as much value as possible. I probably would have went 40, to be honest with you, against two guys. Okay. Yeah, I generally tend to go smaller multi-way, but that's it's good to good to note. 
Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the theory. Smaller multiway, but that's because your opponents are supposed to have to defend less, but that's not really the reality of live low stakes poker. So the adjustment is just a bet larger with value hands. Sure. Because they're not supposed to. The reason why you're supposed to go smaller is because you're trying to force a queen to have to defend when you go full pot. You know, a queen in the middle just, you know, pitches the hand, but that just doesn't really happen that much at one, two. That's the adjustment. But okay, so you bet 15. Yep. Uh, middle position folds and button calls. All right. So button calls closing the action, right? Yep. All right. So now we're at 75. Yeah. So 75 to the turn, which is the jack of spades. So jack of spades here on the turn. King of hearts, queen of hearts, four of clubs, turns a jack of spades. So you, flop, uh, you turn sort of top and middle here, but... I mean, I mean, but, but I mean, like a, there's, a, there's a straight that comes in here in the form of ace 10, but okay. I would still bet here. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where I kind of debated between a two third sizing or going for like a geometric sizing to try to get the money in on the, by the river. But I, I ended up going with uh, betting 50 because I, I thought if I went geometric, I couldn't get called by worse twice with over bets. So um, I bet 50 here. Now, when you see ge geometric, you're talking about betting more to leave less of a percentage of the pot right on the river to get it in. Yeah, like going like 133% turn and then jamming 133% river. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that would be a thing like if the turn was like the deuce of diamonds or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like this isn't a card I, I think that you get to overbet all that much here when, um, when a straight comes in. I, I think betting two thirds is fine. You could still, I mean, he's closing the action. Hands with a 10x in it are open-ended. So if he's got like queen 10, jack 10, those hands are open-ended, king 10, things like that. I would say it is probably hard to make a huge bet at the end and get, I mean, maybe you get called by king 10, king 9. It, it really depends. I mean, there are just some games that no one's ever releasing, you know, top pair. And then you just kind of go back and forth. It's like, he really shouldn't have ace king. You know, he should squeeze, but maybe not. So you bet 50. Okay. Mm-hmm. And villain min clicks it to 100. So hero bets 50. And button raises to 100. And I remember why I picked this hand out. Because I know, Seth, you are a CLP subscriber. And this is just straight out of what I like to call Fifth Street Chicken. And it's the perfect example of Fifth Street Chicken where you have the betting lead... You have a strong but non-nut hand, which is what you have here, right? The nuts change. You lose to a set of fours, nine, ten, ace, ten, things like that. You have a strong but, uh, but non-nut hand, and you're getting a price. So this is where people get a little bit confused like in terms of turn pot odds. So the pot is 225, and it's 50 for you to call. So you're getting four and a half to one. Now, not only could you have the best hand, and this goes check, check at the end, but you also have equity to improve as well. Now, when you look at this, though, with King Jack, I don't even know if, this, if there's really any difference here between having King Jack and King King the way that you'd play it. The only difference being in sort of a small stakes game is you might say, well, I'll just pile the turn here with King King because a guy's never folding like queen jack or, or set of fours or something like that. But when you do a lot of unblocking of the top pair and then a straight shows up, like honestly at one, two, I would probably still just call with king, king. I, I mean, it, maybe it depends on, or, or queen. Now queen, queen's a little bit different. I'd actually rather have queen, queen to pile here because it gives my opponent more of an opportunity to have kings up. But I mean, obviously with your hand here, usually you don't see a kind of, I mean, I don't, I don't know how often people like throw in stop raises at one, two. And what I mean by stop raises, he's like raising the turn with king 10 or king nine and then just sort of taking a showdown. But the whole concept of fifth street chicken is you, you sort of make it look like you're going to call. And then you're basically saying to the, you're playing a game of chicken with the guy at the end where you're saying, okay, it, I, I have something. Are you going to really bluff here at the end? Cause it looks like I'm going to call on a brick. And then sometimes you don't call, but a lot of times it might go check, check, and you win, 
with King Jack here at the end too. The other thing that's a little bit weird though is because the raise is so small, you, somebody could make the argument that it's not even a game of chicken because you might be calling with everything here. Like if you bet 50 and he went like 200 and you were deeper and you called, that's like chicken. Like, okay, you at least have a king here or maybe some sort of heart draw, not heart draw. You're basically daring the guy to bluff at the end if he would. But I mean, I think call is the only play here. Yeah, and, and that's what I did. I, I called. So hero calls. And now we are at what, 275? Yep, 275. 275, and you guys have, what, 370 left? Yep, 370 back. Yep, okay. So the river is the seven of clubs. All right, that's a blank. Yep. Again, the board is king of hearts, queen of hearts, four of clubs, jack of spades, seven of clubs here with king jack from the ultra under the gun small blind because there's a button straddle. And he gets min clicked on the turn. And now we get this run out. He gets min clicked when he turns king jack. And now the river's a seven of clubs, king, queen, four, jack, seven, no flushes or anything. I assume you check. I did check. I thought about leading small here, like 60 or 75. But I, I ultimately leaned against it. That's interesting. Uh, you know, that's interesting. What you say that like le- like almost like a block bet. In general, I'm not a huge fan of a block bet. Of course, a block bet you have to be able to get called by worse in order to block bet. You could make a case here. Actually, the more I think about it, where that might be prudent if you are going to bet and fold, because you want to get value from all those hands that are going to check back that might have stopped raise turn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, it sucks if like Queen Jack just checks back here, right? It sucks if he has like Jack four suited, you know, I mean, it's one, two, Jack four of diamonds and it checks back. But if you come out and block here, he's going to call with those hands, but he's not going to raise you all in. Right. That that was my thinking. But I ultimately landed on a check button shoved 370. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, anytime I would be playing a game like this, like one, two, I mean, I've been hopping in one, three. I can tell you just from what I would tell you when I go to like chasers and wait for the PLO game, cause I'm playing half of that. And then I'll play hold them at encore. Sometimes there won't be a seat and I'll be playing one, three, 500 cap. Right. And I don't know any of the players. And it seems to me that a lot of those guys don't know me too, which is somewhat surprising. It's just down at that level. I don't know. They just, or they don't say anything. I, I will say that if I was playing against a guy at one, three that took this line, I would fold and I would fold probably pretty easily here too because again you would have to now i know that there's clicking buttons and stuff like that but this is a huge bet right it's a huge bet at one two i'm going to overfold at the end and again you sort of have to come up with one of two scenarios where he's turning something into a bluff like a pair that he doesn't think has showed him or yeah that's but that's but that's so rare and then also he is waiting until the turn to make a semi-bluff, which could even be like more rare. Like say, for example, he had, I mean, I guess the jack changes things. I was saying like, say he had like 10, eight of hearts. I guess that's just a flush draw that now turns, you know, 15 out draw. That's not like a delayed semi-bluff. That's more of, he picked up a bunch, but I mean, nine, 10 beats you. So I, I just, I don't see how I could really make I don't know how, like, I'll tell you what a delayed semi-bluff would be here if he had like seven, four of hearts or ace, four of hearts, right? He waited to the turn instead of like raising the flop. That would be rare too. So I would probably fold this pretty quickly, to be honest with you, the more I think about it. And so I ultimately did fold. Okay. And I got a reveal, um, not immediately, but uh, when he was racking up his chips, I asked what he jammed with, and he said he had pocket queens that didn't three bet preflop. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess it's possible, but again, like, so doesn't three bet preflop? I mean, you do see some wacky stuff at, you do see some wacky stuff at one, two. Was this guy an older guy or something? Um, he was like a middle aged white guy. I don't know why he would lie about like holding queen, queen, which is, you know, still beats you, right? But isn't a straight. It's weird how sometimes people lie. Like if the guy said, yeah, I had pocket 10, you know that he would be lying, right? Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I suppose it's possible, but uh, it's, it's interesting. Him, if he was just on the button because of the setup, when you take a look at this, like 
If there wasn't a call in between and you opened from the ultra under the gun, I could actually see flattening on the button with queen queen, maybe not at one two, but it just kind of goes to show you how extreme the configuration is because you're first, you're in the true one hole, right? Where you're opening into eight, well, I guess seven unknown hands if you said it was eight handed, but yeah. No, I think the river is a trivia full, whether he has queen queen or not. I don't think twice really about it, but what would you have done with king king on the turn? I, I think I would still just call there because he, he has all 16 combos of ace 10. And that's, that's right. what I thought the most likely holding was just in terms of combos and the way he played the hand. Right. And that 10, nine suited as well. Right. And then you look at that and then you get into a situation at the end. Let's just say that you had King King and you get into a situation at the end where the guy goes all in for pot and you're like, well, I don't think he's ever bluffing. So, and let's just say that we never really thought that he had queen, queen. Then you'd look at it and you'd be like, well, there's three combos of four, four, right? King, queen, four, jack, seven. And there's 16 combos of ace, 10. Right. And you could be like, well, his value range, you know, he's got four times more value than, uh, than overplay, right? A four to one ratio. And then you take a look at the pot odds, which you wouldn't be getting. And that's how I would look at it. It would be a six spot with king, king. Sometimes you can't make huge laydowns at the end, but in these games, but uh, I appreciate the call. Thank you very much.